My name is Cheryl Efren. I am a board certified dermatologist who has come from the United States. My personal background is 36 years of experience in the worlds of laser. I had the 15th, if you will, KTP and DAG combination in the United States, and I've added lasers progressively to my armamentarium ever since. I am a scientist, first of all. Um, I've spent a lot of years doing science, and one of the things that I am is a skeptic based on that, because there's a lot of materials that are purported to repair skin. Um, they'll come through your office every five minutes, and when I ask people to produce the science, um, they kind of shrug their shoulders. It's marketing. What happened when uh, Callison came to me and asked me to do a protocol, starting with just CO2, fractionated resurfacing, and utilizing Callison serum, initially we wanted to see what was the outcome. So that kind of left things open. I wanted to see, frankly, what did patients tell me about their experience with callosum serum after fractionated CO2. The hallmark of failure in plastics and in dermatology is for the patient to have one procedure and never come back for another procedure. Most patients don't return because they are dissatisfied with the procedure, predominantly based on pain. If something hurts, you're not gonna return to have it done again. And the biggest impact that we had with this product to start with was that patients told you that their skin wasn't as hot on the treated side, uh, it wasn't as painful on the treated side. They told us that this product worked better than anything that they'd ever experienced and they would gladly do these procedures again. So that's kind of a little, a little shocker of an outcome of what is yet to come because there is more data that's going to be presented through time. So this was a 30-day post-fractionated laser treatment with Callison Professional Serum, single-blinded, split-face study. Where do stem cells come from? I think it's important for you to understand, and I hear this all the time, they are not the same when they come from umbilical cord lining as they do from other areas. So other areas of stem cell production are bone marrow, which is only two million mesenchymal cells, adipose fat, which really has very little, so that's why sometimes fat depot uh, doesn't rebuild tissues. Uh, placental extracts, where there's a tremendous amount of damage, and uh, Wharton's jelly, which is a material from the cord itself. But umbilical cord lining extract, the stem cell types that are used in callosum are mesenchymal, which eventually differentiate into fibroblasts, which is what skin needs to repair, and epithelial, where you get your keratinocytes derived, which also have to do with repair. Umbilical cord lining has six billion, not two, but six billion epithelial and six billion mesenchymal cells. So this is what you get from a first growth harvest. The highest number of potential stem cells to generate repair of any product on the market. And that is an amazing statement to be able to make. The science proves itself out in the outcome. Callosum is an integration of the highest concentrations of the epithelial and mesenchymal cells derived proteins. So in the serum, which is what we use post-procedure, you have 80% stem cell derived proteins. You don't have the cell, you have the proteins. In the cream, which is an ongoing treatment, you have 50%. So, what is cord lining condition media? Uh, it's a balance of proteins secreted by the cord lining. This balance is what allows us to see the process of cells behaving in a youthful repair mode. I like the word youthful because the more senescent a cell is, the less likely it is to fix you or repair you. So what we see is an increase in glycoprotein production um, cellular mo mobility for crossing over and repairing damaged skin is there. And the activation of cells to divide with the eradication of senescent cells to restore epidermis to a more normal position. Other ingredients are soluble collagen, 
for strength, albumin for turgor and fullness because it does hold water, fibronectin for collagen binding, hyaluronic acid, and consolidated uh, peptides and glycoproteins. But the key, frankly, are these mesenchymal and epithelial drive protein cells about repair. So what did we see? Uh, the paper that we did was a reduction of pain and discomfort post CO2 fractional resurfacing after application of umbilical cord lining extract, and it was a single-blinded, split-face study. I will tell you right now that 100% of the patients could tell me which side had the stem cell-derived materials on it, and I think that was the shocker. I really uh, have not seen anything quite like this. I used a smart skin uh, CO2 laser. I did a relatively light resurfacing, 20 joules, 400 milliseconds, um, a 10 by 10 scan pattern everywhere, and 350 pitch. 100% of these patients had not had CO2 resurfacing before, so they were naive to the experience. I will tell you my subsequent studies that I'm doing now, I'm doing patients who've had it so they can tell me their comparison. But a single pass was performed everywhere, and then a second pass in the high, more highly uh, linear areas, the ridities, if you will. Patients continued with the serum twice a day at home, and then they were surveyed at day one, seven, and 30. And I'm actually going to show you the tables because I think they're more important than just reading to you what it is that we saw. So immediately treatment day, things weren't as obvious. And the same thing on the second day, which was day one after the procedure. But when you start to get further away, the surpriser to me was by day seven, warmth had decreased 50%, painfulness was down 43% on the treated side, redness had been reduced 57%. But look at the big surprise. Get out to day 30. How many patients tell you they still had pain 30 days after a CO2 resurfacing? Not many. So what you see here is that patients are telling you that their treated side had a 64% reduction in discomfort compared to the untreated side. 71% told you that the treated side was less painful, and to me that's the most impactful statistic, because less pain means I'm going to come back and I'm going to do more of whatever it is you're doing. And redness was also reduced by 65% on the treated side. So the photos are not as dramatic. But the statements from the patients were 100% used the word, wow, this is soothing. We used basal media immediately after the treatment on the right side and on the left side of their face. We immediately put the uh, stem cell concentration protein-derived materials uh, on. And their statement was, wow, that feels good. So here you can see on the control side, there's a lot more. This is immediate. Um, that the control side has a lot more in the way of crusting. This is within a minute of treatment on the other side. He has less erythema. As we get to this slide, you'll see this is control side. Same thing here, post laser, pre and post. And then on the treatment side, you will see that there's a lot less erythema and crusting. This is within one minute of application compared to the control side. Same thing here, control side versus treated side. Control side versus treated side. So immediately, you may say, well, it's not as impressive the way it looks, but that's not what they'll tell you. Same thing here. Obviously, less crusting on the treated side. So if you can see this subtlety within a minute of application, what can you see down the line? Patients filled out surveys. And they all came back. I had no, out of the 14 people, we had 100% compliance. Because frankly, they were all shocked as to how it felt. They wanted to know how to get more and more serum. Same thing here. Reduction of erythema, reduction of crusting within a minute of treatment. I don't know anything else that does this. And this is a patient who, likewise, erythema and crusting reduced. So what did we find? We had decreased redness, decreased swelling, decreased sensation of pain and heat, and increased patient comfort. I, I think the extrapolation has to be, what does that translate to in modern day practice? It means that you successfully do a procedure that patients are happy with. 
the biggest finding for me was it was downstream. I'm now three months after the fact and the patients all come in. Their skin not only has less pain, less redness, it has, it's tighter, it's brighter. I will tell you that on my own, um, I haven't done the studies yet, but on my own, I was so taken with the scientific implications. I've now used it uh, post-tattoo removal with, with our PICO, which is extremely hot. 100% uh, of patients have blisters with PICO. Not with this, it was a shocker. Uh, my nurse had a variegated tattoo on her wrist, very sensitive area. She only did PICO once. She said, I don't think I can do this again. I said, well, let's try this and see. So we did the same settings, immediately put on the callosum. She said, well, this feels great. Not a single blister, but the outcome four weeks later and eight weeks later was that the pigment was gone just like it would be with conventional PICO without treatment. So here I had the outcome I wanted, but I had no pain. So I know she's gonna come back and have me do more. I've used it for peels. Uh, I've been able to get every kind of peel to feel more comfortable. I've been able to rescue peels that have gone wrong with other people with this, even though a few days have gone by. And I think that the application for every high energy painful device we have is quite dramatic what this can do. I have used it post 532 and 1064. I use 532 a lot to get rid of, uh, it's actually my acne laser. My uh, XLV is my acne laser and I can get rid of sebaceous hyperplasia with it. Uh, I can also get rid of dyschromia. Um, obviously 1064 you're going for a deeper application, but when I treated people one side with callosum, they, and use basal cell media on the other, they said, can you please put the, the other one on the other side? So patients could immediately tell you that they had a decreased sensation of pain. And then down the line, our folders are going to show um, wrinkle reduction because that was the other outcome, is that we saw repair. The parameters of this study had to do with patient satisfaction and comfort, not so much what we saw with fine line reduction, but it was all there. So I'm really excited about this product. It's been the first time I've been excited about any kind of post-laser treatment. Uh, the other thing is that my climate is not as humid as yours in Southern California, but we're hotter than Hades now all year round. We haven't had rain in two years. And my acne patients suffer terribly when you, in the past when I would do CO2 resurfacing, I would end up with acne. I have no acne now. These patients do not develop acne. All the other products that were applied were acneogenic because they were occlusive. And part of occlusion, the problem is it traps heat. So there's no heat trapping going on here. The serum is so light when applied that everyone feels a great deal more comfortable afterwards. And again, you have a non-acneogenic uh, product. Someone asked me, well, how can you do a patient who has acne? And I said, well, I'll do the 532 to hit the sebaceous glands 14 days in advance and then do resurfacing to shorten the downtime because I have a lot of Hollywood and they, won't, they have no downtime. And that's the other aspect, 50% reduction in downtime. That's tremendous for your active patients. So I, I, I am surprised by the outcome of the, my own study, if you will, and I'm delighted. And I look forward to continuously working with more applications and more lasers because I, I know it's there. Um, again, this is the number one system, if you will. The serum has the highest percentage of repair potential of anything on the market, and you can say that with the science behind it.